Hey, coffee lovers. I know it's hard to start the day without that perfect cup of coffee. But did you realize that drinking coffee could be negatively affecting your health? You don't have to give it up though, because in today's video, I'll share with you some secrets of enjoying coffee without sacrificing your health. Make sure to watch to the end to get all the secrets and advice on drinking coffee. Hey, coffee lovers. I know it's hard to start the day without that perfect cup of coffee. But did you realize that drinking coffee could be negatively affecting your health? Make sure to watch through to the end of the video to obtain all the secrets and advice on drinking coffee that I'll be sharing with you in today's video. I'll be sharing secrets about enjoying coffee without sacrificing your health. Hello, welcome back to Health Angel Solutions, your go-to resource for creating individualized functional medicine plans that help people reverse their chronic health conditions. So the first thing to discuss is whether coffee is good or bad for your health. Coffee has a high concentration of antioxidant compounds, which have been shown to help reduce inflammation in the body. However, other research studies have demonstrated that individuals who regularly consume coffee for longer than six months may have higher levels of inflammation. This confused me as well, which is why I did a thorough investigation into the literature to determine why this was occurring. One of the main explanations I discovered was that the amount of caffeine you consume on a daily basis plays a significant role in the body's suppression of thyroid hormone production. The second thing it does is raise the body's level of cortisol, a stress hormone that causes inflammation whenever levels of cortisol are high. This is how coffee causes inflammation. The magic amount of caffeine found in research studies is 200 milligrams per day. So if you consume less than that, the studies suggest that coffee may not be harmful to your health. The following query is, what is the caffeine content of a single cup of coffee? Once more, there's no easy solution. Since the coffee's caffeine content varies depending on a number of factors, there are several factors that affect the amount of caffeine in coffee, including the type of coffee beans you purchase, their roasting profile, and how you prepare it. Generally speaking, one drip coffee cup contains 90 to 100 ml of caffeine, while an espresso shot contains 80 to 90 ml. However, there is a catch. Many of the most well-known coffee companies, including Starbucks, have extremely high caffeine content in their coffee. Because the majority of coffee beans are grown with high levels of pesticides and insecticides, coffee beans are one of the most polluted products in the food industry. This is concerning because it was recently shown that coffee beans also have a high lead content. One cup of Starbucks coffee can contain anywhere from 150 to 200 milligrams of caffeine. So the first thing you need to do is stick to having only one cup of coffee and not more. Finally, it should be noted that coffee beans may contain mold toxins, which when consumed, enter your body. For this reason, it is crucial to source your coffee beans carefully in order to reduce the amount of toxins in them. The best course of action is to purchase as many organic coffee beans as you can or investigate the origin of the coffee beans to determine whether they are high or low in toxins. Additionally, coffee can interfere with the absorption of many vitamins, minerals, and medications, particularly those prescribed for thyroid patients. So how does coffee really affects? Let's find out. But first, if you made it this far into the video, thank you. These videos take a lot of effort and time to make. So if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. This goes a long way in helping us grow that said back to the video. Avoid taking your thyroid medication with coffee in the morning. Make sure you're not taking any supplements or medications with your morning coffee as this will also affect the absorption of those nutrients for at least 30 minutes. Research has shown that taking thyroid medication with coffee reduces the absorption of that medication by 33%. In addition, thyroid medication and coffee interfere with the absorption of zinc, selenium, and iron from food. The second crucial point to remember about drinking coffee is the timing of when you do so. A gap is necessary for your body to metabolize the coffee before it can absorb those nutrients. Most people drink coffee in the afternoon because they feel tired, but this is not a good idea because it takes your body at least eight to 10 hours to process all that caffeine. Additionally, 
Drinking coffee in the late afternoon affects your melatonin hormone secretion and raises your cortisol levels, which in turn affects your anxiety and sleep quality. Finally, if you drink coffee in the afternoon, you should avoid doing so because it causes issues with insomnia. The final point is that all of the ingredients we put in our morning coffee, creamers, milk, excessive sugar content, honey, and jaggery, for example, harm our bodies. Therefore, choose healthier sweetener options. For your dairy, consider using stevia or monk fruit. Try switching to dairy-free milk, such as almond or coconut milk. The next piece of advice is to pay attention to your health. Coffee must be processed by your liver, and many people have a gene called CYP1A2 that is malfunctioning, which causes their body to metabolize coffee more slowly. As we wrap up today's discussion on the right way to enjoy coffee with thyroid, it's crucial to remember that managing your thyroid health doesn't mean giving up the simple pleasures in life, like your daily cup of coffee. With the right approach, you can still enjoy your favorite brew without compromising your thyroid function or overall well-being. The key takeaway is to be mindful of timing and moderation. Avoid drinking coffee immediately after taking your thyroid medication, as it can interfere with absorption. Instead, wait at least 30 to 60 minutes before enjoying your coffee. Also, consider limiting your caffeine intake to moderate levels, as excessive caffeine can exacerbate symptoms of hyperthyroidism or lead to adrenal fatigue. Pairing your coffee with a balanced diet rich in thyroid-friendly nutrients like selenium, iodine, and zinc can further support your thyroid health. It's crucial to pay attention to your body in addition to these suggestions. Everyone's thyroid condition is unique, so what works for one person might not work for another. If you notice any adverse effects after drinking coffee, such as increased anxiety, jitteriness, or disrupted sleep, it may be worth cutting back or consulting with your healthcare provider for personalized advice. At Health Angel Solutions, we believe in empowering you with the knowledge and tools to make informed decisions about your health. Coffee, when enjoyed mindfully, can be part of a balanced lifestyle, even with a thyroid condition. So take these tips to heart, enjoy your coffee in a way that supports your health, and continue exploring ways to live your best life with thyroid wellness. Thank you for joining us today. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, share it with others who might benefit, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more health tips and solutions. To ensure you never miss an update, press the notification bell. Until next time, take care of yourself, and remember, your health is your greatest asset.